Okay, I'm sorry, this is again coming to the beginning of the slideshow. We'll, uh, we'll just uh, forward a little. Okay, so this is the first lecture which we are having. We are going to see what we are going to do with water. Okay. So, where are, where are the areas where we feel water is being used? Maybe I should have shown this slide, but where is water being used? Every day? Daily life. See, I have just put a few things. Drinking and human consumption. Cleaning. In fact, in many of the religious, uh, uh, many of the religions, water plays a very important role. Okay. So, without, uh, you can just think, many of you, you will understand what I mean by this statement. Then sanitation. Then transportation. Okay. In, uh, in America, the logging industry was such that they will cut a tree, put it into the river and it will just go, bottom of the river they collect it and saw it. So this is one of the things. <coughs> then I am talking about process in industries. In all the industries you study, uh, you will find that especially chemical industries, be it a thermal power plant. In fact, in the first day you would have had, uh, in a first year B, I am sure you would have had this water for boilers in chemistry. Okay, so, boiler water has certain requirements which prevent or which ensure that the boilers work correctly. So, you have in fact distilled water and uh, DM, demineralized water which is being used specifically for certain industries. In fact, in certain industries they don't want oxygen to be dissolved in the water also. So, this water undergoes a lot of treatment before it gets into the processes. Power generation both in terms of hydel power as well as a thermal power. Okay, when you are having a boiler or uh, even a nuclear power plant, many of the times you need to have, sometimes they call it heavy water also, but depending on the type of uh, process, you will still require ordinary water. Then uh, navigation, of course, I think I am putting transportation and navigation one after the other. But these are the places where water is being used and each of this water requires certain parameters to be done. For instance, in uh, many of the places for the flush water, they take the bath water, recycle it, put it into flush tanks. Those water you are not supposed to drink. So, this sort of things happen in, happen to water. So, now what happens is, drinking water is a very important thing for healthy living and healthy lifestyle. So, and the water it should have, it, uh, whatever, what, water you give it should be of adequate supply. So one of the first things that happened in the recent floods to Chennai was, there was no drinking water. Drinking water got a hit. Water was there everywhere, but they couldn't use it for any purpose. They were not wanting to use it for washing themselves. They were not wanting to use the water for uh, bathing, definitely no. And uh, so the water was there, but good water or what water you would like to use was not, it was in short supply. So, we need to have adequate supply and it should be of satisfactory sanitary quality. Okay. The example of what we are talking about, the Kerala water, it is good but it might not be acceptable for a person who does not know about the benefit of that water. So, sanitary quality it also includes odour. Sometimes you will have some smell in the water, it might look clear will be transparent, but the moment you are having some smell in it, we won't use it. This I still very distinctly remember. Some creature had fallen into the overhead tank in our college in our graduation days. We made a hue and cry. Why? There was a smell in the water. There was nothing other than that indicates. It was clear, everything. They all fought and then they found yes, something was dead. Then they did it. So, this is what we mean by the satisfactory sanitary. It should be attractive to drink. That example of oil under water, we don't like it. Then it should be palatable. Taste should also be good. Okay. So, uh, if you take some well water, it will be clear. It will have no smell. It will satisfy all the parameters. But it will not be palatable. You won't be wanting to drink it. So, our treatment objectives will always be that we are getting aesthetic water. Aesthetic means it looks comfortable for the human being. And it should be safe water. So, aesthetic and safe. So, the sources of water are the surface water and subsurface water. Normally, for water treatment in India, we usually depend a lot on surface water. 
but subsurface water also is used as in they go for wells they will dig deep bore wells and then they will take the water and use it normally subsurface water in the flow river bed is what is used for supply okay then these are the three parameters for water so uh, basically it should it has so many things like smell odor color so whether something is mixed in it not mixed in it then there are the chemical properties the water which is coming out from uh, a chemical plant it will have undesirable parameters although it might not have smell it might not have other things but it will have even like you know traces of cyanide or such things are going to be very harmful for human consumption so chemically it should be safe and biologically also it should be uh, good because the water which we use is not only for human consumption just like we say so many other microorganisms also make their life in water so typhoid and all these things are water borne diseases they call it so they call them water borne diseases so these pathogens should not be in the water so actually it's a fight between all of these and us these pathogens also want to live we also want to live but we are more powerful we do something to kill them so this is how our uh, water treatment works in fact i'll say that uh, sewage treatment water is there's a fight between the anaerobic and aerobic component so as long as it is anaerobic it's very bad for us anaerobic bacteria tries to bring the oxygen levels down continuously whereas we want to increase the oxygen content and we try to keep this so this is the way it goes i got a short uh, video so if you'll just bear with me I, it's not uh, playing on uh, it's not playing directly on uh, our uh, on our uh, powerpoint so i'm just playing it on vlc i'll just uh, transfer it there probably if, if you turn off the fan you can hear the audio i'll try to bring some speakers for the next class Drinking water that's fresh, clean and crystal clear is something many of us take for granted. We might not give it a second thought, but between the source and our tap, a lot happens to make that water fit to drink. Our water may come from mother nature, but it's far from pristine. It starts its journey to the treatment plant through a water intake pipe. On the wall of that pipe, about six and a half feet down, is a six-inch hole. Covering that hole is a metal grill designed to keep out large debris such as tree branches. The water flows to the pumping station, where it goes through a preliminary screening. A giant revolving screen removes fish, garbage, and grass. Once they remove the debris, a low pressure pump moves the water into the treatment plant. The untreated water, called raw water, is dirty and smelly. They first add a powerful form of the chemical element carbon, called activated carbon. It absorbs contaminants such as solvents and pesticides. That leaves the water of bad taste and odor. From there, the water goes through a series of mixing tanks. The first tank holds a chemical called aluminum sulfate. It acts as a coagulant, a substance that thickens liquid into globs. In the raw water, the aluminum sulfate forms tiny sticky globs called flocks. Bacteria, mud and other impurities stick to those flocks. Then the flock filled water moves on to the second mixing tank. The second tank holds a chemical called polymer, which is essential to the next step of the process, called sedimentation. Five pipes inject the water with superfine particles of sand, called microsand.
the polymer coats the sand, making it sticky. The grains of sand then stick to the flocks in the raw water, weighing them down even more. The water then flows into a settling tank, where the flocks, because they're heavier, settle to the bottom. You can see the result in this demonstration. The water is finally clear, but it's far from drinkable, because it's still full of bacteria, viruses, and other organic matter. So on to the next step, filtration. The water flows onto the top of the filter, then trickles downward passing through a layer of anthracite, a type of coal, then through a layer of sand. This filters out any remaining particles, which then flow to the middle. But the water is still teeming with bacteria and viruses, so it has to be disinfected. They add 1.9 milligrams of chlorine for every four cups of water, enough to kill off those germs and bugs. Then they add a mineral called silicate to prevent calcium buildup from blocking our water pipes. The treatment plant sends water samples to a government inspector who continuously monitors the water supply to ensure it meets safety standards. The amount of chlorine remaining in our drinking water is 20 millionths of an ounce per liter. The chlorine gas the plant uses is highly toxic. Should any leak out, emergency teams would have to evacuate a six-mile radius. So the plant stores the drums of chlorine in a high security area. It's taken about 45 minutes to turn raw water into treated water. Now these electric motors will pump it through underground pipes right to your tap. Drinking water. So what did you think of that? Basically, this is what we are going to do in our course this time. We are going to see small, small plants. Each of that, what you saw, each of the operation, there was first a screening operation. There was a settling operation by using flocculants. And then they brought it out and they added chlorine. That was the disinfection part. So I got other videos also, which I will probably be uh, using through the course. After some time, we are going to find it a little boring. Because everything is going to be something similar, probably there will be something slightly different, which I am not going to go through now, which I am not going to state now. So basically, you are going to go to the lab. Did you have the lab today? Did you attend the lab class today? Okay. So when you go to the lab, please do not go to it thinking that, you know, I failed to do this test class time, so I didn't get through. It's one of the most... Uh, challenging and most interesting labs which I feel not challenge it's not a challenge it's actually quite easy and why, what are the reason why as a civil engineer you will need to go through all of this it is because at some point in your career you will find that you are going to talk with people on some of these terms for instance your septic tank you might be a small time contractor who is just building or doing a septic tank so somebody is saying that there is too much of uh, some parameter like for instance let us say there's too much of dissolved uh, 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 solids total solids is more they are saying so what, you will have to take an inter intelligent uh, stand at that point of time you should be saying no no minus still perfect in fact presence of solids is the first point which I put okay so this sort of thing uh, will will be encountered by you at some point of time in your career so these are the parameters which you are looking at of these parameters, is any of the parameter new to you or do you want uh, to know something more? So basically all of them are familiar terms. Just that you are going to go to the laboratory with the intention of trying to see what you get. Now what is the reserve, what is the relationship? So some of the other terms are here. So, sorry? Yeah. So DO is nothing but dissolved oxygen. DOD is biochemical oxygen demand and COD is chemical oxygen demand. The rest of the stuff is quite uh, common. So, coliforms is nothing but uh, pathogens or dangerous creatures, dangerous to you, microorganisms, which can cause some diarrhea or some condition which is not acceptable. So, the objectives of water treatment are very simple. 
you remove the toxic or health hazardous material toxic material can be chemicals they can be stuff like what i was talking about cyanide or its derivatives because many of these are very often found in even things like paint okay so then it should also inactivate the pathogens in the former video we saw there, there was the use of chlorine okay so then we have to provide a consistent uh, water quality every day the taste of water should be the same okay for instance whenever we had rains when we are depending on the municipal water supply you will find that the chlorine content was deliberately increased i'm sure you are familiar with it because they don't want any outbreak of epidemics but when i was small i found it very annoying to have that chlorine flavor in my water okay and other thing is your water which you take sample from a river is not what even if you look at the big rivers like uh, if you happen to have seen the ganges or brahmaputra it is full of water but it is not you won't want to eat or drink uh, you, i mean like with that water so this is the thing what you have to do you have to enhance the aesthetic acceptability of the water then we are talking as engineers these are the things we want to do good engineering practices means that these objectives are fulfilled okay so first thing is you should have a reasonable factor of safety the water you drink it should be safe it should be uh, it should be good to a large extent in the sense that you should be having the confidence that it is going to be safe safe at which point safe at the point where it is getting delivered okay so usually you will you will find that there are water reservoirs that serve about 3 or 4 km radius of area so from the point from the time it discharges from the tank till it reaches the end user there is a chance that there might be a small crack in the pipe so there might be a septic tank nearby okay it might sound very horrible but this is the truth okay so if that enters into this pipe the quality of water is going to degrade okay so it should be such that you are adding enough chlorine at the onset so that when it goes and reaches the end person will not get sick and the process should be uh, it should the cost should be it should be cost effective we cannot have a very costly process for instance one of the best things would be just to have ro plants everywhere okay but cost of an ro plant running the ro plant maintaining the membrane all these are very expensive so we should have it we should know where to make the fine line because if i uh, near my father's house in kurapakkam in chennai they have got our government has got these big ro plants which serve the community so they take water directly from a lake put it through the ro process when, when you go you get it through the ro process it's fully safe so they just pump it and then they distribute it in that place itself they don't tra- distribute it uh, as pipe water you have to go there and collect it so probably for that it might be cheap okay it's a remote place so as engineers what engineers we should be in a position to choose the appropriate treatment method so what is the contaminant in it is it going to be a chemical contaminant is it a biological contaminant or is it something else is it just that uh, taste is more bad because of the salt content so these are the things which you do then you define the objectives are you going to do this as boiler feed water are you going to take this as a process water what are you what are what are you doing the treatment for but here in particular i am talking about drinking water so what do you want to achieve have you seen the advertisements of aqua guard and all aqua guard enhance they say this one gives the best amount of salt this gives this uh, adds uh, flavor to your water so so many things they are telling they saying all these parameters are going to be met by my uh, my device so this is the objective which they give sell to you so like that when you are going to treat water these are the things which you are going to do and you also need to have correct control techniques so what happens if uh, is the water which has gone through aeration sufficiently aerated so what is the thing which is going to determine it? so these are what we mean by uh, the correct control technique then we also have i am also going to speak a little about the parameters so what is the requirement okay what is the thing which uh, what is the uh, these are the parameters which you will see when you are going to decide okay i am not going to go through each of these just go through it i'm sure you will be able to understand these are 
actually self explanatory but if you want to want me to speak about something in particular you are, you are please feel free to ask Okay. Shall I stop now?